So in your experience, all of you who are sort of involved in this, how, what kind of a difference does having a presence on the uh, social media, YouTube, Vimeo, uh, Clips Up, uh, clips up uh, doing a web series, Twitter, tweeting, tweeting, twi yeah. I mean, how, how much of a difference does that make For in terms me, of an actor's I profile? For me, I didn't want to have anything like that because I like going into a room and meeting somebody for the first time. Uh, and, and having that introduction and being introduced, even if they might know some of my work, um, as that character for that character, be prepared for that. But the lesson I learned is they'll Google you. <laughs> they, they'll Google you first and they'll find your stuff if, you, if it's out there. And, and, and they, if they don't find the right stuff, they're finding what's out there that's, that you didn't put up, that somebody else may have put up. So in order to control that, I made sure to get a really good reel and a really good headshot and put a site and what I want sent into that room first, that meeting, that, that I can uh, introduce myself to the way I want that room introduced to me. So that, that was a big lesson for me. I mean, that was like, I didn't, really, I have to? But yeah, you do. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you have to. If they and if they can't find you, that's even worse. Yeah. Like if someone told you to go to a restaurant and you Googled it and it, you couldn't find it anywhere, are you going? No. no. It's the same thing. And um, there's an acting coach out here even that I work with, and she says that um, the uh, internet readiness stuff now is like your pre-screen. So if they're looking for you, they want to find your stuff. They want to know what that is. And producers, directors, whoever, they want to, if you're relatively unknown or don't have a ton of credits yet, they're going to be looking at your stuff and finding you to see how many followers do you have, how many likes do you have, how active are you, how much influence do you have over your community. Because if you have a lot of influence over your community, that's dollar signs in their head. That's butts and seats to see a project they're going to cast you in. Yeah, you need to think of this as social currency now. Okay, each and every single one of you can, can mint bucks, okay? But it's through knowing people, it's through your relationships. And this business is a business of creating, building, and maintaining relationships. So as a result, the social media has extended that relationship, extended those opportunities. So we have to have presence. And, and one of the other things that we, we always want is we want you and your name, especially as a SAG after a member, your name is what you have. Your name is your, rep it, it, maybe not your reputation, but I guess it is. But it, it is you in the business. It is your brand. And we want your, your brand. We want your, your tag. If it's on, 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 um, on Twitter, we want it to be, for me, Kevin Urban. Because that's me. That's my name in this industry. And Jody had an example where, where with YouTube, right? You're going to make me tell that story. I, well, <laughs> I, think it's a, I think it's a good story okay, because it yes. speaks to exactly, it speaks to, to that, I, oh, I don't want to do this. Right. You know? So I waited for a long time to get my YouTube channel. And I waited too long, and there's a gentleman named Jody Bentley who lives in Kentucky. And he's a rock climber. <laughs> Right. And so he got the YouTube channel before me. I got everything else except the YouTube channel. So I got so mad. I was, I was trying to add my middle name. That wasn't working. So finally, I just put J for Jody and my middle, my middle name. And I got so mad, I didn't even complete my last name. I just put Bent. So my YouTube channel is Jan Bent. <laughs> so it's tough for people to find me on YouTube. So I had to start putting my name and tagging that and everything. But the lesson in all of this is use your name, get on all these sites, because the more presence you have, the more people are like, oh, wow, look what they're doing. And like you said, it's hard because it's not personable as much anymore. But with social networking, you get to make it personable. This is where people get to know you and who you are. Does anybody besides me find this slightly terrifying? <laughs> okay, good, good. So, so what do you do to get over, like, if you're like, I don't want to do that. I just want to act and do a really good job and have people hire me. I mean, what do you suggest to people? Suck it up. No, I'm kidding. Suck I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Cowboy up. I'm kidding. I'm that's kidding. Man up. That's Jody Bentley. Light a, light a, light a fire under you. No, this look, I know. And it's not like we have to do everything now. Like, we feel like we have to do everything now. Um, one of the things we always talk about with Savvy is having systems and structures. If you can have a system in place for yourself, you're going to do it. When you're staring at the Facebook page going, I don't want to write what I had for breakfast. Well, then you're not going to write anything, and then nothing's going to get done. So I, what, I, what I do and what I recommend to clients is start with Facebook and Twitter. Okay, just start with that. We can try LinkedIn, we can do YouTube, we can do a bunch of stuff, but have a daily posting schedule is what I like to do. I have different themes for my days. So on Monday, I'm going to give a great shout out to someone that's helped me in my career. On Tuesday, I'm going to put a quote from a famous comedian because that's how I want people to see me. 
in the business. I, every Wednesday, if you go on my Facebook page, you're going to see a picture of my dog, because I love my dog, and you're going to see a picture of my dog every Wednesday. She loves so, her dog. But if you and everybody you know is doing that, how does everybody have time to keep up with theirs and what everybody <laughs> else is doing? It's I mean, is, it, does it like become your life? Well, no, it doesn't. There's many tools out there. Hootsuite yeah. is a great tool that you can use to help schedule these things and get it out to all your sites, okay? Um, oh, gosh, I lost my other thought. Uh, okay, but really why we're doing all of this, too, I mean, the rule of marketing. You have the, it takes the average person seven times to see something before they take action on it, right? So that's what we're trying to do. Just get your name out there in the social networking sphere, and then people will start to know it. They'll start to remember it. But we have to let these marketing rules play in our favor as well. Well, I like how Lisa also, also said, you know, I know when it's right because all of a sudden the, the phone rings the next day and I have something that's right for my client. If you're putting stuff out there, we let the, the Twitter gods and the Facebook universe come back to help us. And, and, and What does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> well, it, it means a lot of different things. Like, it's funny, like if you're looking for an apartment, how many of you have, have put out in the Twitter universe, I'm looking for an apartment, and then gotten 28 responses or 30 responses? Anybody? Yeah, so Facebook, just, okay. just using... <laughs> I don't feel quite so bad. Way, way more, I know there's way more, okay? I do it all the time to find out information. Who has access to this? If you put it out there, the Twitter gods bring it back to you. But you have to take, you have to ask for it. And that's what social net networking allows us to do. And, and just a quick story, I mean, I got my manager through Twitter. I did. She was posting all these motivational quotes. I was posting motivational quotes. We just started for like two months going, oh my God, I love that, and retweeting and sharing. And finally, I started looking and researching her. I was like, oh gosh, this person's a manager. <laughs> and so I, e I sent her an email. I said, hey, can we take a meeting? She said, sure. And that's how we started working together, through Twitter. And so I, I, like do, I, I get people in, I do Twitter a lot, and I do Facebook a lot, and I get people that come in and, and I said, do you have any questions? They've been invited in because they have the right skill set. My assistant you know, liked what they sent in. And then they go, no, I, not really. I follow you on Twitter. And I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> then you know what I'm about, you know, because um, I have a lot of Twitter followers around the nation. And I think it's awesome because I do weird things on Twitter. Like we do a live, like right now I'm missing out on Vampire Diaries, you guys. <laughs> but we do a live tweet, tweet, all my followers and I, and we just tweet during Vampire Diaries. I mean, and we have so much fun. It's just something that we happen to do. And then the rest we do m motivational stuff and tell what's going on at the agency and stuff. But the thing I love about Facebook is I have like 100 like best friends that I can just tell them one thing and it hits all your friends, you know, and then your friends, you know, tell you back and it's really cool because you know, you feel like you're kind of um, staying in touch with all your friends, which is really awesome. But then I also have a business page, which is just for my, you know, for the people out there I'm not that are not my clients, and I have one that are just for my clients, where I just give, you know, personal yelling do at them and stuff. Do you do all this yourself, or do you have somebody yeah, do, it do it myself. for you? I know, I do it myself. Wow. I'm it's so really impressed. easy. You guys should do it. It's really fun. But can, can I add something to that, too? Please. Uh, from a publicist, pers publicist perspective also, a little, sometimes too much is too much too. So sure. sometimes it's sure. easier just to do the Twitter and the Facebook, have a separate business page where you can get a certain amount of likes, where the content can even be written in the third person. It can seem more um, putting you on, on the podium. Someone can be bragging about you because it's not you writing about yourself. But always take into consideration, no matter what you do, what you say, someone's going to read that. They're going to see that. It's forever, thank you. <laughs> Library of Congress, yes. yes. So it's, while it's, it's a forever. wonderful I mean. way for all of us to use these different Facebooks and Twitter and all of that, and it's easy, it's free, we can all do it here without hiring anyone, we can do it ourselves, but just Not always take a little thought to write, sh and make sure you write things grammatically correct and spell <laughs> correct and, you know. That's uh, a pet peeve, I think people notice that's fine. Oh yeah, absolutely, <laughs> I, and I, I even am a, a step less than that. I, I don't have a Twitter thing and, and I do have a Facebook thing, but I keep active by staying on the sites that I like. Like I follow actors or shows that I like and I'll comment that way. So it's not directly about me, but I'm part of that community uh, and a big one for me is uh, Sons of Anarchy. We have a lot of followers and those are the people and they're really a, a, a big branched out community from all walks of life. So I can comment on something like that without having to have my own page that people have to come and look at me or whatever like that is, but I keep active that way, so I kind of keep my toe in the water without having the very personal stuff about, you know, my dog today did this, which I don't mind. I'll go look at everybody else's, but I'm not the kind of guy who wakes up and does that. So, uh, and, you know, so I make sure to have my reel, 
uh, and headshots there, uh, comment on other people's Facebook, and, and just keep that, and that's what I'm comfortable with. But uh, yeah, by all means, it is out there, and if you can use it, and it's, and it's your cup of tea, you know, uh, and, you, and you can master the skill, because it is a skill, you know, it, it, it will very quickly, if you spell everything correctly, and you have this like, and you have this picture, people will immediately get a sense of who you are, yeah. immediately. And, and the opposite is true as well. If you misspell everything, you have a raunchy picture, and this, that, and they're going to say, I know who you are. And you're going to get a whole bunch of different kind of likes. Right. So, yeah. I'm going to open it up to your questions, but I do have a few uh, questions from the committee that they put together, so I'm, I'm going to ask them. Um, what are the best, since we're talking about this branding thing, what do you consider the best ways to know your type? Or types? Do we have more than one type? Well. Actually, uh, I like to look at brand as, a, as an iceberg, like the concept. We've all been raised on the concept of type, okay? If I think of type, I look at type as being the tip of the iceberg. And when we look at an iceberg, and we've all seen pictures of the iceberg, we know that there's a little small part of the iceberg that's actually sticking above the water. The rest is below, okay? So when we're looking at it, it's, okay, what's the, what's the first perception that's, that's self-evident, okay? That's the tip of the iceberg. That's your type. Then there are things about you that aren't self-evident, but they're there, they're present. Sometimes your friends are always like, oh, you're so funny, and then everybody else is like, oh, I never see you, you're not very funny, <laughs> right? There are still that quality, you are in certain areas funny, but it's about identifying what you are, what you naturally bring to the table, what people enjoy about you, um, and it, it's understanding that there's so much more to you, and that's why I like the concept of brand. That's why we've incorporated the concept of brand in our teaching is because we want three-dimensional people. In our society today, we go, I'm one person here with my family, I'm one person with my friends, I'm one person at work, I'm one person. We segment ourselves, and we can't segment ourselves as actors. We need to be whole human beings with a whole range of emotions and, and be able to showcase ourselves. I like to say that we all have different colors that we use to paint our characters, okay? And there are some, I, I, and, and some have more than others, right? But, but at the very basis, that's what separates us from everybody else. And identifying that is the key. But do you think that I have to have somebody else tell me? Mm -hmm. You need a combination. Absolutely. Well, I, I think branding is a combination of your own perception of self, right? The external perception <laughs> of yourself and the goals that you have in the industry. All three of those have to play together nicely. Because if, if I think I'm a dramatic leading lady, but the industry sees me as a comedic sidekick, for say, or a comedic girl next door, there's a disconnect there, right? So we have to make sure that matches. Does that make sense, you guys? Yeah. But who decides how it matches? You, can, you work with your team, obviously, to do that. Um, it's a lot of it is you asking your uh, other uh, teachers that you work with, uh, business coaches that you could work with, um, other actors, because garnering information in the industry of really how you're perceived is, is where to start. And we just taught, actually, today at the Semester NLA course for Chicago, um, Columbia College in Chicago, and having them uh, do this first impression exercise for them. And some of these kids were, were floored at how they were perceived because they had thought other things. And of them felt completely validated going oh my god that's exactly what I want that's exactly how I thought I was being perceived so it's it's really making those match in any way you can but getting that information of how you're perceived in the world I think is is the first step hmm. so uh, one of the questions here and I think maybe more for for Lisa and Deborah and Pam is about um, somebody wanted to know is there a point where an actor just simply is too far behind in the quote-unquote credit game is the late bloomers concept a myth? Is there a point in one's career where stardom actually becomes out of reach? I would say absolutely not. John Mahoney? I mean, well, let's take John Hawks. Um, oh, he's a guy that I've known for probably 17 years. No one ever knew who he was. No one ever heard of him. Did a couple of films, Slightly Sessions, and people know who he is. Um, I think most actors, and another actor that's a really good example of that is Philip Seymour Hoffman, I've known since school. Um, I, it was probably 10 years went by before anyone I knew ever knew who he was. Um, I don't think it's really about credits, interestingly enough, because what all of us, especially casting directors, are looking for is always to find something new. 
So I, I don't think we really look at credits per se. If you're doing a small independent film and the financing guy is saying it has to be a known person, that's one thing. But as you go down the line and what you really want to do is not have the 10 same people that play those same parts in every single movie. The whole nice thing, if you look at Argo, for example, um, what Ben did in that film and what Laura Kennedy did was they used people who you didn't normally see do those roles. And that made it a really good film. So I think there is definitely has nothing to do with credits and it really has to do with talent. And sometimes people are in theater for 20 years and never even expose their talent. So there's always a chance. And if you look at commercials, um, my um, father-in-law is a very good-looking guy, never acted in his life, um, basically an attorney, he had his own you know, firm, and someone walked up to him one day and said, oh, you'd be so great for this commercial. And he said, really? And he ended up doing this commercial. He never had a credit, never thought about it, and he kind of had this whole second career doing commercials and did really, really well. So I Niagara? say to you, it's out there. <laughs> Really? <laughs> um, in, in your experience, do you think it's ever too late? No, it's never too late. I think there's roles for everyone. And what I do, like we, I always talk about one of my best friends, she is on my roster, and she was a theatrical actress, and she didn't have any film on herself. And I think that's what the theatrical actors face, you know, and you want to get into films. And so all we did with her was we got an actor slate. She was really funny, and um, so we used that for a while, and then we got her a booking, you know, and then we stopped using the actor slate and used the booking for her demo, and then when we got a better demo, we stopped using the other one, and we just, we just stepping stoned it. So there's just, it's just about getting your tools in place. That's all it's about. Um, and I, um, have an, I have two actors right now that are recurring on major television shows right now who had no credits when I met them, um, and they quickly, you know, they were just great, you know, great types, and we got the, tools together and they met casting and now they're all working actors, you know? And um, so, no, it's never too late, you know? And a lot of my older actors on my roster do work, you know, all the time. It's harder, I think, for an older actor, right, to get an agent, though, I have to say, because most of my talent, per se, we're all in, the, in their 20s, is most of my roster. And then I have a few, right, that are a little older than that, a little older, a little older. But all my older people are all working. All of them are. So it's just a matter of finding the right manager for you and the right agent for you, right? Do you think actors need, actors starting out later in life need managers as well as agents? I think you need a team. And so whatever works for you, I mean, you can have, if you, if you as long as you've got people that believe in you and that you're honest with, then you're gonna do great, you know? And I always talk about it as team you. So whenever we get something, you know, it's always like, yay, team Joe. You know, um, because um, we all work together, the call could come to me, the call could come to the manager, the manager could have made the initial pitch, or uh, who cares, you know, as long as, as everybody's honest and everything. Um, I think that you sometimes have to have a manager. A lot of times your manager does the theatrical for you. I know it's hard to get a theatrical agent, and so I know a lot of people I meet that are doing it that way. Um, and so um, it just depends. I find that my people that really want my attention, that really need me to talk to them all the time, I really push them to get a manager because I don't have time. And I, cause I used to be or a, a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> therapist. <laughs> well, you know, I like to give my That's actors a lot of. <laughs> I like to give my actors a lot of access to me, yeah. and it's really hard because I let them Facebook message me on our private client page, and I, and we have to have a long discussion sometimes. Like that's not dear diary. You know, it's only occasional because I have so many clients and I can't have the squeaky wheels. I can't do it because I, I, it takes away from everybody else. And so I find that if you are somebody that really needs that attention, then you're going to be great with a manager who can have that time and yeah. focus with you so that I can focus on just getting you as many auditions as possible. All right. Here's, here's a weird, interesting question. Um, I, um, can early success work against an actor? How do you make early success work for you if you are trying to restart a career? I'm feeling, I'm feeling energy over here. Take it away. Well, I, I think that the agent could probably answer better. Um, I think it has to do with your team. You can hit really hot early, and I think if you don't know how to kind of nurture that and know where to take yourself from that point to keep that momentum going, I think you can, I think you can hurt yourself. That's my opinion as a publicist. I don't know. I think you can. I think, too, yeah, if, no, I if, you, if you do the press, too, when you're younger, if it's not... 
it's really always about the next project, at least for me. When you're pitching projects, and going back to the age question too, um, a lot of it is what's the next project? What's the next thing you've got going on? People don't really care about what you have now. So you can hit hot, but it's always about what's down the road, what's down the road. Yeah, but it's also a town that once you're famous, you always get to be famous. The Robert Downey Jr. can be in somebody's bed and winning an Oscar, you know, I mean, it's, I, I guarantee if Lindsay Lohan and Charlie Sheen get it together, they can, you know, once you're there, That's you can always true. go back there, is, is what I've seen, anyway. 